So I was playing football at Utah State. It was a pretty um, caustic environment, really negative environment. It was um, uh, all the football team had to live together, and the football team was not very moral uh, at a minimum and didn't use good language, and I didn't think lived a great lifestyle with the exception of one or two players. That, I mean, I think there was one return missionary on the team when I was on the team there. So I was coming from that environment, and uh, when I put my mission papers in, I was partly escaping the environment that I was in. So I, I, I could have gone anywhere and I would have been happy. Uh, so I don't think the real conversion of missionary work came until I'd been in the, in the field for about six months. So I wasn't the best prepared missionary. But once I got there, I can tell you that when we were flying into the Philippines, the, the, uh, I'll never forget, we're flying into Manila, and the, we were in the 747, I'm looking out the window and the plane turns and the wing dips and I'm looking straight down at the ground and I can see a school and kids are playing. Smoke is coming up from all these fires all around from people burning trash or cooking. They cook over open fires right, right on the side of their house. And I got to tell you, I, I thought, what did I get myself into? I mean, I really thought that I've made a mistake. This is, this is, I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm completely out of my element, right? So that's the way I kind of went in. And uh, the very first experience I had is I get off the plane, I go in, I got to use the restroom. I walk in to use the restroom. And you know how you look, you know, I had to go number two. So I look under the door and there's no feet. So I open the door and somebody kicks it shut. Just bam, shut. And just like that, I was like, what? How? Are they hiding their feet? So I go to the next one, same thing, open the door. Somebody yells this time and kicks it shut. So fun, I go to one and the door slightly open and there's nobody in there, so I go in there and there's nowhere to sit. So I figured out that they're standing on either side of the toilet and squatting to go to the bathroom. So when you look under, you can't see any feet. They're standing on the toilet. So, um, you know, I, I just wasn't prepared. You know, from, from going to the bathroom to anything, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't spiritually prepared. But after, you get, after I got there, after about six months, and I forgot about all the cares I had about, uh, you know, lifestyle or living conditions or food, stuff like that. Um, I really did feel like I, I had a purpose to be there. There was a reason for me to be there. But it took a while. It took a while. And it took, you know, things like meeting the Holy Ghost. I met a guy who called himself the Holy Ghost. And there was a, a Father Bosch who was a local priest who would drive by with his motorcycle and try to hit us with his bag because he was so mad at us for being there. And so I, it was a life-changing event. Serving a mission was an absolute life-changing event. Once you figured out why you were there and what you were doing and that you were there changing people's lives, it changed my life. It changed it for the better. So me and the mission president was awesome. He was a military guy. My dad was a military guy. I completely understood him. Strict disciplinarian, had no problem. I can, you know, I can operate under those environments. I'm no problem. I played football. I understood discipline and hard work. That's what he wanted. So that wasn't a problem. But once I got into the mission, so out, out of the mission home, I was loving it. I mean, we get to the mission home. It's a beautiful house. I'm thinking this is great. Hot and cold running water. Had no idea that when I went to Ormo Clidi, which is on Leyte. And to get there, we had to we take we had to take a bus, to a boat, to a, another bus down to the down to the place. So I mean, you know, transfers. It took a a day to get there, or a day and a night to get there, and it wasn't that far away. I mean, anyway, once I got there, I got assigned to a companion from Brigham City, and uh, he was a super quiet guy. Um, so quiet, in fact, that uh, I even counted one day. I thought, I'm not going to initiate any conversations with him. I'm just going to let him kind of lead us through this day and see how many words he speaks to me directly. The number was six. Six words he spoke to me directly, other than greeting people and teaching lessons. and all, But when actually speaking to me, it was six words for the day. And that to me, that was just crushing. I mean, here I am. I can't understand a, a word people are saying. They're speaking English, keep, keep in mind. And I can't understand a word they're saying. And um, I'm walking around. I, it's hot. It's humid. I'm sweating like a beast. 
Uh, I go to bed the first night. I get completely attacked by mosquitoes. I woke up and my, the whole bed was red from where I, the, the mosquito would bite me. And I, in my sleep, I'd roll over and just squish the mosquito on my sheet. So that's the ones I squished. I don't know how many got away with my blood. I probably, I probably lost a pound that night. But, um, and then you take a sh the, the first shower in the morning, like I said, it was a dump of, of cold water on the head. I'm like, I gotta do this for two years. And uh, so I can tell you the first week was pure tears. I mean, I cried every night, thinking what in the world did I get myself into? And again, nobody knew who I was. My reputation did not precede me. Uh, everywhere I'd been, my reputation had preceded me. I was, you know, I, I, was, I think I grew up entitled. I felt like, you know, I'm, I'm an athlete. I, I get what I want. I do what I need. And, and there I was nobody. I was a guy who couldn't understand the language and people laughed at me and uh, made jokes about me because I couldn't speak the language. So it was a really tough first, uh, not first six months, I'd say the first couple of months was a really tough adjustment and then I gradually started to ease into it. Luckily there was another companionship in the city with us. So when we'd go home at night, at least I'd have those guys to talk to because my companion, as you know, didn't talk. So it, uh, um, uh, it was it was a really really tough transition, but I was you know I was carrying again I told you I came in with the wrong attitude I was I I went for the wrong reasons really I was part of it was escaping part of it was I always knew I wanted to serve there was never a question that I'd serve a mission so even when I took the scholarship at Utah State to go play football that was never a thought that hey I'm not going to stay and play four years and then go on a mission I'm going to play for a year and then I'm going to go and then I'm going to come back. Um, so I just kind of stuck to that. I, did, um, I had a testimony. It was a fairly strong testimony, um, but um, I didn't. Uh, I I didn't. I wasn't sort of in the right mind frame. I, I remember driving to the MTC the day that we were driving to the MTC. Uh, I had a really good friend named Todd Cooley who died, and his brother Eric Cooley uh, kind of became one of my mentors. He was just a. He, we skied together. We uh, uh, ski raced at Snowbird, and he was an older guy and a really hard worker, and I just admired him. And we're driving down the we're driving down the freeway, and here Eric Cooley follows us and pulls up next to us on the freeway, rolls his window down. He says, "I trade places with you in a second. I'm so jealous." And I, and I looked at him like he had two heads. I'm like, "Are you kidding? I'm leaving for two years. I'm going to leave all this behind, and you you want to trade places with me?" So it was a first sort of indication that I had that my mind wasn't in the right spot, uh, that he understood missionary work. He had served in South Africa, and it told me a lot of stories. So uh, it was just uh, an indication that my mind wasn't right. And it took a while to get my mind right. Uh, but it, so it was, I'll say it was a very, to answer your question, very tough transition. Mm -hmm. So once I got to where I was loving the people and more interested in them and their welfare than my own, once you f sort of forget about, hey, look, I'm, I'm probably never going home. Didn't seem like you would ever make it back home again. Once I abandoned that thought and then I'm, I'm here to stay and I'm just going to love, you know, you start to learn about the people and understand them and understand that the, hu the humble circumstances they live in, then it became a whole different, a whole different game for me.